Is this the best month of sneaker releases in 2022? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is Sit or Sell. Before we dive into it though, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Soul Premise. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about the Soul Premise. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavier than I thought. The Soul Premise Luxury Leather Backpack. This backpack is awesome. I talk about it all the time, but in today's video, I wanted to talk about one of their other awesome bags that I use even more. And that bag is the Soul Premise Duffel Bag. I'm not gonna throw it this time. <laughs> Just like with the backpack, this bag is TSA certified, which means that you can carry it on the airlines with you. You don't have to check it. And I realize this might be a dumb way of showing you guys how big this bag actually is, even though it's got a pretty small footprint. I've actually put two sneaker boxes inside this bag just to show you guys generally what you can fit in here. Both size nine, so both pretty large. Don't know why you do that, but you can do that. You've also got two sneaker compartments on either side of the bag. I've got my Nike Dunks in the Syracuse orange colorway. And just like with the Soul Premise backpack that I always show you guys, this bag is made with incredibly durable and good quality leather. So if you guys would like to check out Soul Premise and grab either of the bags that I've talked about or any other bag on their website, make sure to click the link in the description below and use my code SETH for 40% off everything on their website. It's a crazy discount code. And once again, huge thank you to Soul Premise for sponsoring today's video. They've been a longtime supporter of the channel and I really appreciate them. But getting back into things, if you're not familiar with this series, basically what I do is I take a look at all of the sneaker releases in the first half or second half of any given month. In this case, it's the first half of April 2022. I let you know what I think about each one of these important sneaker releases and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. But I guess without further ado, let's just get right into it. Starting things off on April 1st, we've got the Adidas Crazy One in the Sunshine colorway. So this shoe was originally an Adidas Kobe model back when Kobe was with Adidas, but in 2014, because Kobe was obviously with Nike, they decided to change the name of the silhouette to the Adidas Crazy One. But what's interesting about this shoe isn't just the naming of the sneaker, but also the way that it looks. Apparently the design inspiration behind this shoe was the Audi TT. And and since the shoe's release, a lot of people have considered this silhouette to be one of the ugliest sneakers ever made. So it's kind of interesting to me that Adidas decided to bring this shoe back in one of its brightest colorways, the Sunshine colorway, which actually makes this shoe look even crazier than it already does. Now as far as release, I have no idea how limited this shoe is going to be and I think that has a lot to do with whether this sneaker will sit or sell. Even though this shoe is crazy ugly, I do think there's a market out there and for that reason, I do think this shoe may sell out. Also dropping on April 1st, we've got the women's Nike Air Max 90 Siempre Familia. So the design of the shoe is inspired by Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. And that inspiration is made pretty apparent throughout the rib cage on the toe of the sneaker. The shoe comes in darker hues, it features a lot of blacks, browns, and greens. And overall, it's not a bad looking sneaker, and if you're into Dia de los Muertos, this is not a bad shoe to pick up if you're a woman or can wear women's sizing. All of that being said though, I don't think this shoe has that much hype behind it, and in most cases, hype is what makes sneakers sell, so for that reason, I think this Air Max 90 will probably sit on shelves. Also dropping on the first, we've got the seasonal return of the Nike Air Force One Flax. So this shoe really does come back every single year, and seemingly every single year it sells out. Now it's not an immediate sellout, the shoe is not incredibly limited, but it's enough to where if you want to grab a pair of these like a couple weeks after they release, you're going to have a really hard time finding them. If you're not familiar with the AF1 Flax, the shoe essentially comes in a Timberland colorway. It features a light brown nubuck upper with a matching midsole and outsole. And honestly, the shoe is not that exciting, but it really does go with a lot of different things, but I always wonder why they release this shoe in the spring and not around the fall or the winter. It would make more sense as a fall or a winter shoe, but that's just my own opinion. But with all that being said, just like last year and the year before, I definitely see the Nike Air Force One Low Flax selling out. Maybe not instantly, but eventually. Also dropping on April 1st in sort of a weird April Fool's style release, we've got the Nike Air Force One Low Purple Skeleton. So uh, it kind of feels like this is an April Fool's joke because this is a Halloween sneaker and it's dropping six months after Halloween. I'm not sure exactly why this is happening. The only thing that I could think is because there's been so many supply chain issues that maybe they just didn't get the sneaker in stock until now. But even still, why don't you just save it till next year? Like why don't you just hold on to this shoe? I don't get it. But for whatever reason, they're dropping it in April on April Fool's Day, even though a skeleton themed Air Force One doesn't make a lot of sense in April, but uh, hey, you know what? Nike's gonna do what Nike's gonna do, so there you go. The sneaker has already technically released, I think. I don't know if it's released on the sneakers app and this is a restock, or maybe it just hasn't released on the sneakers app yet. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, I know people do already have their hands on this sneaker, but with that being said, even though this sneaker is very late to the party, it's still a more limited release, and for that reason, I wouldn't be surprised if the AF1 Low Purple Skeleton still sells out. 
And then rounding off April 1st, we've got another weirdly Halloween themed sneaker on April 1st, and that's the Nike Dunk Low Halloween. So while this shoe is technically a Halloween themed Nike Dunk, at the same time, it could be construed as maybe just a more fall colored Nike Dunk. It's not as blatantly Halloween as the uh, purple skeletons are, but still, it is a Halloween themed sneaker and it's releasing in April, so that's pretty weird. The sneaker comes in primarily white or cream colored leather accented by black overlays that have Halloween themed accents. I think it's like eyes or something printed on to them, it's kind of weird. And then you've also got orange hits on the back of the tongue and on the Nike swoosh. And again, while I think the shoe could get away as being a non-Halloween themed sneaker, once you see those eye details, it, I don't know, it just doesn't work. I can only assume that the reason this shoe is releasing in April and not in October is because of supply chain issues, or it could be a weird April Fool's joke. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, the shoe is releasing, and if you want to grab a pair of these, they drop on April 1st, and uh, because they're Nike Dunk clothes, even though they're Halloween themed, I do think these sneakers will probably sell out. Moving on to April 2nd, we've got one of my favorite, if not my favorite sneaker release of the entire year. I'm not joking about that. Seriously, it's one of my favorite releases of the entire year, and that's the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Georgetowns. So as you probably could have guessed, I've already done a review on this sneaker. You know I had to get this sneaker early because I love it that much. And I've gotta say, after having the sneaker for a couple weeks, I love it even more. It's an incredible, incredible shoe, and if you like Air Jordan 1s, it's a must cop. So as you probably could have guessed from this name, this is the 85 variant of the Air Jordan 1, meaning that it's cut just like the original 85 Air Jordan 1, so it's a little bit different than your standard Jordan 1s, and you might not be used to very thick, sort of stiff leather, but at the end of the day, the leather is thicker and honestly higher quality than a standard pair of 1s. It looks really, really great, and this colorway, ah, this Georgetown colorway is fire. You've got light grays, or I guess medium grays, accented by navy blue, the shoe has this really, really clean sort of cream colored tongue because the mesh used on the outside of the tongue is white, but it's very thin, so you can see through to the yellow foam underneath. It's a beautiful sneaker. It is absolutely worth grabbing. I can't say enough good things about this shoe, and uh, I'm definitely gonna try and double up. Unfortunately though, nicer Air Jordan 1s do come at a slightly higher cost. This shoe is retailing for $200 versus $170, but again, I think it's worth it. And right now, resale is not that crazy, so if you guys wanna grab this shoe early, I've left a link to GOAT in the top of the description below. Otherwise, uh, Wait till release day and hopefully you get lucky. And as you probably could have guessed, I definitely think that the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Georgetowns will sell out. Continuing on to April 5th, we've got the Nike SB Dunk Low Polaroid. So as the name would suggest, this shoe is a collaboration with camera company Polaroid. And this is actually not the first time that Polaroid has collaborated with the sneaker company. In fact, like two or three years ago, they collaborated with Puma. I was actually at the launch event for that. It was pretty cool. I think it was at Extra Butter in New York City. But they've done some collaborations before, and just like their previous collaboration, this shoe features rainbow colored details. So in addition to the shoe coming in a very cool sort of multicolor look, the most interesting thing about this sneaker is actually the color block. Unlike most Nike Dunk Lows, the color blocking on this shoe doesn't come in your standard like overlay and underlay look. Instead, the back half of the sneaker is one color and the front half of the sneaker is another color and it's sort of divided by that multicolor Nike swoosh. Not only that, but apparently the shoe also features some reflective details. We don't know exactly where those details are yet. I would assume that maybe they're on the heel tab of the shoe or something like that. But uh, either way, it's a pretty eye-catching sneaker. Personally, my favorite part of the design of the sneaker is actually the Nike swoosh, or should I say swooshes. The Nike swoosh is made up of three different Nike swooshes, sort of overlaid over top of each other, and the center one, the yellow one, is actually semi-translucent, so you can see right through it. It's honestly a very cool and unique look, and one that I would love to rock. Unfortunately though, because this shoe is a Nike SB Dunk Low, or a Nike Skateboarding Dunk Low, that means that this shoe is probably only going to be sold at retail locations that are also skateboarding stores. So if you're trying to grab these in-store, you're probably going to have to grab these from a skate store, which means that there's going to be a lot fewer places that carry them. They are dropping on the sneakers app, but I'm I'm sure the quantity that they're releasing is probably pretty low. So because of that, this shoe is probably going to be very difficult to get. And for that reason, I think that this shoe is definitely going to sell out. Moving on to April 6th, we've got the Women's Nike Dunk High FLS. So apparently the inspiration behind this shoe is a convergence of the physical and digital world. Now, I don't know exactly how that translates to a gray, white, and teal colorway, but apparently it does. The shoe features tumbled gray leather, tumbled white leather, and of course, sort of a metallic teal Nike swoosh. It kind of looks like your standard Nike Dunk High in women's sizing. The colorway itself is not that exciting. Oh, okay, so according to the sneakers app, the Nike swoosh features color shifting enamel, so the Nike swoosh can change color or color shift or something like that. I don't know to what other color, but apparently it can. Regardless of whether I think the inspiration behind this shoe is dumb or not, it doesn't matter because this shoe is still a Nike Dunk and Nike Dunks are insanely popular right now. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. 
Next up on April 7th, we've got another women's Nike Dunk. This time around, it's the women's Nike Dunk High Vintage Black. And actually, unlike the previous women's Nike Dunk that we just talked about, I love this sneaker and I really want a pair, but I'm probably not gonna be able to get a pair. So like the vintage green Nike Dunk lows that dropped a couple weeks ago, this shoe features a sort of vintage, or I guess cream colored midsole. This vintage black colorway features a white leather upper accented by black overlays, as well as cream colored, or again, vintage colored laces. Now, okay, let's be honest. This sort of vintage trend that Nike is sort of riding, and making all the midsoles of their sneakers cream colored. While yes, it's very corny, at the same time, it looks really good. So even though I'm not really into the idea of calling this shoe a vintage dunk because it's anything but, at the same time, I really love the way this shoe looks and I wanna grab a pair. But most likely, that's the way that a lot of people feel and I think that grabbing a pair of the women's Nike Dunk High Vintage Blacks will be pretty difficult and I definitely think that this sneaker will sell out. Next up on April 8th, we've got another sneaker release that I'm incredibly excited for, and that's the Union LA Air Jordan 2 in the Gray Fog colorway. So it seems like for Jordan brand, 2022 is the year of the Air Jordan 2. We're getting collaboration after collaboration after collaboration, and apparently at the end of the year, we're getting the OG Air Jordan 2s again. So needless to say, if you're an Air Jordan 2 fan, you're gonna love 2022. Now as someone who isn't the biggest fan of the Air Jordan 2, I don't think it's a bad silhouette by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not on the top of my list. The Gray Fog Union LA Air Jordan 2 is a shoe that I've been heavily anticipating. Union LA has collaborated with Jordan Brand a few times over the last couple years, and not only that, they've already dropped some collaborations this year, but this shoe will be the very first Union LA Air Jordan 2 to release. And like I mentioned, this shoe will come in the Gray Fog colorway, which is actually only one of two Air Jordan 2 and Union LA collaborations to drop this year. This shoe features a primarily gray upper made up of nylon and suede, as well as featuring some really clean, bright blue accents on the lace eyelets and some other places. But even though I love the colorway of this shoe, in fact, I like it better than the upcoming Union LA Air Jordan 2s that are supposed to come sometime later this year, the thing I really love about this shoe are the perforations on the midfoot. I know it's such a small detail, but it really makes the shoe stand out from other Air Jordan 2s. I've always liked Union LA's approach to their collaborations with Jordan brand. With the Jordan 1, they stitch two shoes together, and with the Air Jordan 2, they're changing up the paneling on the upper. They've also added the sort of interesting cream colored tag on the ankle area of the shoe, which I'm not totally in love with, but I don't don't think it takes away from the design. Now because this shoe hasn't been officially announced yet, we don't actually know the inspiration behind this shoe, but even without knowing that, I think it's an incredible looking sneaker and is definitely a shoe that I will be going for. But like with most other Union LA, Nike, or Air Jordan collaborations, I'm assuming this shoe will be very limited and will most likely sell out instantly. And then finishing off April 8th, we've got the off-white Nike Blazer Low in black. So this shoe was supposed to release near the end of last year, but due to the untimely passing of Virgil Abloh, Nike decided to push back the release of this shoe an indeterminate amount of time. But it seems like now is the time and we are finally getting the first release of the brand new off-white Nike Blazer Low on April 8th. So I've gotta be honest, this shoe is not exactly my thing. It's not the kind of sneaker that I would run out to the store and grab, but because it is a new off-white model, I'm definitely interested. So as you can see the upper of the shoe features those punched out circles that Virgil has been known to do on sneakers like the Air Jordan 5. In addition to that, it also features the double lacing system that we found on the Nike Dunk Lows. But what makes this shoe most interesting is the fact that this sneaker doesn't feature a standard Nike Blazer midsole. Instead, it features this new pointed heel section that I've never seen before on any shoe. And uh, I'm not sure exactly why they decided to change things up. So on this black colorway, the heel counter portion comes in black, green, and blue. And I'm assuming it features some kind of new cushioning setup, maybe React in the midsole or something. But there's gotta be a reason why he decided to change things up like this. Aesthetically, I'm not really a fan of it. It's too weird for me. And based on the fire rating on Sneaker News' website, it looks like not a huge amount of people are that excited about this sneaker. But at the end of the day, it is a new off-white silhouette and people are usually pretty excited about those. So because of that, I think that even though this might not be the most popular off-white Nike collaboration, this shoe will still probably sell out. Next up, on April 9th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Jade. So according to the Nike Sneakers app, this shoe is a new colorway that features familiar details, like oxidation. Apparently one of the selling points of this shoe is the oxidized outsole, which is Kind of a weird thing to promote, but that's what they're doing. The shoe is styled like an older pair of Air Jordan 5s. It looks like it's been in the box for a while, probably like five to 10 years is sort of what they're going for. The shoe seems to continue running with that sort of vintage idea that Nike and Jordan brand are pushing. Um, I don't know if I love it. I think the overall sort of olive color, or I guess jade color that's used on the new buck on the upper of the shoe is pretty clean. 
But as far as these oxidized hits on the midfoot cage and on the uh, outsole of the shoe, I'm not sure exactly how I feel. I don't know, I know I was talking about how I love the cream colored midsole on those Nike Dunk Lows, but when you're oxidizing an outsole, on a shoe that's not a collaboration, like with the Air Jordan 5 Off-Whites that were specifically designed to look like they were older, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It's almost like Apple creating an older looking version of their iPhone. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but it's, it's almost the same idea. And honestly, I don't know if this colorway is for me just because of that oxidized detail. I don't think it looks that bad. I kind of wish they had just gone for a more standard yellow or cream color on those details instead of going for a specifically like brownish yellow oxidized look. But hey, you know what? They can do whatever they want to do and uh, we'll just see how this sneaker does. I'm interested to see whether people run out and grab this shoe or whether people kind of leave this one. To be fair though, it is one of the more popular Air Jordan models. It's Jordan 5 and the colorway isn't bad. And because of that, I do see this shoe probably selling out. And then rounding off April 9th, we've got yet another restock of the Zebra 350 V2s. So back in 2017, when these shoes first released, they were one of the most popular and the most coveted Yeezy 350 V2s. And that was primarily because they were incredibly limited. And now almost five years later, the Zebra has experienced so many restocks that I think the Zebra colorway is one of the most uh, available colorways of the 350 ever. But because the colorway was so popular back when it first released, I think a lot of people are nostalgic for that colorway. And for that reason, I think people still love the Zebra look. In my opinion it's really not the best looking 350 colorway out there I don't understand why people love this shoe so much but they do and because of that adidas keeps restocking it now I have no idea if this new version or new release of the zebras is gonna be any different than the originals I kind of doubt it but either way people are gonna be hyped on this shoe they're probably gonna release a ton of them and most likely they're probably going to sell out Moving on to April 15th, we've got a shoe that we've actually already talked about in a previous video and I think was actually pushed back from last month, and that's the Nike Dunk Low in the Fossil Rose colorway. So this shoe comes in a primarily nubuck covered upper. It features sort of dusty rose accents on the Nike swoosh and also on the heel tab. And accenting those details, you've got some white panels as well as some, I guess, light blue or light gray colored overlays. I'm not sure exactly what color that is, but I don't mind it. And like I said in my previous video, I don't mind the way this sneaker looks. It's just kind of a little bit boring. It's not the most exciting shoe in the world however it is very wearable but at the end of the day let's be real it's a nike dunk low people love nike dunk lows and because of that this shoe will definitely sell out and then finally moving on to the last day that we're covering in today's video, April 16th, we've got the Air Jordan 7 SE Shimmer. So this year is the 30th anniversary of the Air Jordan 7, and apparently in order to pay homage to that, they're releasing a shimmer version of the sneaker. According to Sneaker News, this shoe comes in an ACG inspired colorway. You've got light tans on the upper, you've got grays in the midsole, and then also purple hits throughout. But what makes this sneaker even more interesting is the fact that a lot of the panels used on this shoe are actually semi-translucent mesh and make the sneaker somewhat see through. Now is that a detail that I really like on the Air Jordan 7? Not really, but uh, it's here and it's been done before and uh, it looks like Jordan Brand is going to continue to do it. That being said, the shoe itself doesn't look bad. I really like the ACG inspiration. I'm a big fan of Nike's ACG line. I like the purple hits on the tongue and through that sort of semi-translucent plastic. And overall, it's not a bad looking Air Jordan 7, but I honestly don't think it's going to be that popular of a colorway. Now the real question is, how limited is this sneaker actually going to be? Because that's what's going to determine whether this sneaker sits or sells. But if they release this shoe in the quantities that I think they're going to release this shoe, you shouldn't have too hard of a time grabbing this shoe. And and again, I do think this shoe is probably going to sit. And then finally rounding off April 16th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner in the Sulphur colorway. So while this shoe is not exactly the same as a lot of the other light tan or cream colored Yeezy Foam Runners that have released over the last couple years, it is still very similar. This Foam Runner features sort of a creamy yellow makeup and unlike some of the previous Foam Runners, it doesn't seem to have any sort of marbled upper. And honestly, for anyone who missed out on any of the previous Foam Runners, this is another great option. I mean, the shoe is very wearable. And you guys know me, I love the Foam Runner. I think it's an incredibly comfortable shoe. It is very polarizing aesthetically, but I think a lot of people are coming around to it. And if you've never tried a pair of Yeezy Foam Runners, I definitely recommend trying them out. I think they're gonna change your mind. Now, even though it feels like we've seen a million different cream colored Yeezy Foam Runners, this shoe is still gonna be pretty popular. It's still probably going to be relatively limited and not that easy to get. And for that reason, I definitely think that the Yeezy Foam Runner in the Sulphur colorway will sell out. But that pretty much wraps up all of the sneakers that I wanted to cover in this week's Sit or Sell. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on these releases and which shoes you're looking forward to most, so make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.